Alright everyone, uh, so this video is going to be on something that a lot of people ask about. It's more of a basic thing, but it's worth talking about, and that is the basics of GIMP. So GIMP is the GNU image manipulation program. Uh, if you use Linux, it's one of the most common uh, <clears throat> excuse me, image editors that people use. Uh, of course, it also runs on Windows and everything else. Um, but in this video, I'm going to talk about sort of doing the basics in it or how I use it at a daily basis. Usually, I make my YouTube thumbnails in uh, GIMP in one way or another. Uh, but of course, I also do a lot of other stuff in it. So in this video, the thing I'm actually going to make, uh, it, I want to... I want to use a lot of the basic functionality of GIMP just to show it all off. Uh, but what I'm actually going to make is actually a thumbnail for a, a video on YouTube. In fact, I'm going to make the thumbnail for this video, so uh, I sort of half the amount of work I have to do for this. Um, so anyway, GIMP by default is going to look something like this. Now, one of the things that annoys people uh, about GIMP is sometimes, well, usually the default is all of these different taskbars, or not taskbars, but uh, status bars and stuff like this, they're all going to be separate windows by default. Now that annoys a lot of people, so what you can do to in that is just go to Windows and click Single Window Mode. Uh, I use that, it's sort of annoying not to use that. Uh, if you accidentally close a dock, of course, you can go to Recently Closed Docks or just na uh, select whichever one you happen to close. Uh, but this is the setup I usually use. It's pretty much just the default, but in single window mode. So also, I am going to activate Screen Key because I want to show you the kind of keyboard shortcuts that I'm using. Uh, these are just the default uh, keyboard shortcuts in GIMP, which I usually use. Uh, I don't like going to have to click all these. It's much easier to just know the shortcuts. So let's go ahead and start out. I'm going to press Control N to start a new uh, file or something like that. Um, and the dimensions I'm going to choose are uh, 1920 by 1080p. That's the default HD resolution, and it's what I use for my YouTube video thumbnails. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. Um, now I'm going to zoom out, uh, press Z to zoom, and you can click uh, left or right click to do whichever. Um, now, notice by default the background is going to be white. In fact, the background is going to be whatever your secondary color right here is. Uh, you can change it at the beginning and it'll show up as something different. Now, what I want for my background, so my vision for all I want for my little thumbnail here is I have this GIMP picture and I want to have it on one side of the picture and then maybe on the other side I'll have text that says it's going to be the thumbnail for this video, so something like, you know, GIMP image manipulation or something like that. Now before that, I, I sort of want to decide what kind of background I want to use. Now sometimes I will actually take a screenshot of my computer uh, and just input it here, like if I'm doing a YouTube video and that'll be my background and then I'll add something on top of that. But for this, what I think I'm going to do, first I'm going to uh, type Shift B. Now Shift B is going to add automatically activate this fill tool, and I want to fill this background up with something. Um, now actually it looks like I was just using it before, but just uh, to be clear, so you can select what different things you want to fill it with. You can choose the foreground color, which right now is black, the background color, which right now is white, uh, but I'm going to use pattern fill. In fact, I um, with pattern fill you can select some kind of different pattern, and that's going to automatically fill uh, the, the whatever you have selected up with uh, this kind of pattern. And the one I'm actually going to use is the one I had selected at the beginning, this uh, blue web. Just because it's, it's, most, it's a simple background, but uh, you know, it doesn't really get in the way of anything. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import uh, this image, this uh, little GIMP logo that I have here. Um, now you can do that by uh, choosing Control, Alt, and O. And that is going to give you um, you can uh, uh, basically a file selector that uh, you can go and select this file as and that's specifically going to import it as a new layer. Um, now you can use control O to just open it manually. In fact, let's do that and you can you know manually copy and paste it over here. But what I did uh, here is just uh, actually have it input as a separate layer that I can of course treat, I can move around and do stuff with. So for example, if I press M, M is gonna activate this move tool. Uh, I can move this around with my mouse pretty simply. So I, I want it somewhere over here. Uh, that's going to be simple enough. Now on the other side, I, I want to have some text. Um, so text, uh, just press T for text. And your defaults for how it's going to appear are going to be right down here. Uh, I have sans serif font at size 62. Now once you make a text box, that's what I'm going to do now, you can also start, uh, you know, you can change it by highlighting and changing it in here. I'm going to go ahead and put some text, let's say, you know, uh, basic image manipulation 
uh, using GIMP or something like that. Uh, and we'll put an exclamation point because, I don't know, it makes it more exciting. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, let's say, let's see what 200 looks like. That's a little too big. Maybe 150. Actually, let's make it bold. Uh, let's say... Uh, now, of course, you can drag your text box to make it a little bit bigger. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, that looks all right. So now I'm going to... Let's actually move it down so it's a little bit more centered. Oops. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, now nothing is cut off, everything looks alright. Um, now here's what I want, I want to have this text, but I want to have, I want to have the different words a different color, so they sort of stick out, I think that's good for a YouTube video, that's usually what I do. I have like each word, each important word is like a bright color that sticks out. Um, but I also want to have sort of a, a background to, or not a background, a sort of outlining to this text. So that's something that's easy enough to do, let's go ahead and do that. Um, actually, for example, I'm actually going to change this to white for now. Uh, I'll show you why in a second. Um, but anyway, so let's say we want to create sort of an outline to this text. Now what we can do is go over here at your layers. Now first off, if you don't know how layers work, all of these are ordered in the order that you're going to see them. So for example, if I move this text, if I click and drag it below the background, you're not going to see it anymore because it's hidden behind it. So the things on top are going to be the things that take priority. Now anyway, the first thing I want to do is um, I want to select the text. Uh, not the text box, but the text inside of it. Now what I can do for that is click, uh, right click on it. It's going to give me this menu here and I'm going to select Alpha 2 Selection. Now what this is going to do, well I'm going to click it and uh, I'll show you what happens, is it actually zooms into that, that area of this layer that is actually has stuff in it that's not transparent. So you now see that all this text is sort of selected. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create a new layer um, and I'm just going to have the defaults on that. So this new layer is going to be where I put the outline of this text. Now what I want, I want the outline to of course be bigger than the text um, itself by default. So I'm going to go up here to select, and you have a couple nice options, specifically grow and shrink. And this is for if you have, for modifying the selected, you know, portion that we have, we can either grow it out or shrink it in. So I'm going to select grow, and I'm going to say grow that by 15 pixels. Let's see how, yeah, that's actually pretty good. So now that selection is sort of moved out 15 pixels. Now make sure you have your the layer you want to work with selected. Now what I'm going to do is press capital B to select this paint tool and I'm going to fill it in. Actually I'm going to select foreground color so it is black and I'm going to fill this in right now. Uh, now you see that all of this is now black. Now you can't see the text anymore. That's not what we want. But that's only because this layer is above the text layer. Now if we move it down you're going to see now we have an outline and now we have text separate from that. Um, so that, that's actually pretty much what I want. In fact, I might, I might make this go out a little longer. Let's grow it a little more. So I still have uh, this area selected. Now I'm going to grow it out, let's say, five more pixels. And I'm going to control B and then paint that. Now I should notice there are two different options for filling in, or excuse me, not Control-B, Capital-B. There are two different options for filling things in. You can select either the whole selection, so that's going to be everything that is selected, or similar colors, which basically means, actually let me show you what that looks like. So if I, uh, let's say I undo that, Control-Z to undo that, and let's say I select fill similar colors, and if I click here, what's going to happen is it's only going to fill in the area that I click. It's not going to fill in, you, you probably might not actually be able to see this, so let me zoom in. So, uh, capital B. Now if I click on manipulating um, with, or excuse me, I should probably actually click the non-transparent area, you're going to see that there are these little remnants around, and that's because this is only filling in similar colors, while this little blue line that was sort of the border is not going to be totally filled in. Now I don't want that, that's why for this situation, it's better to, to choose whole selection. Um, so anyway, that's just a little uh, diversion. So anyway, the next thing I want to do is I just want to change around the color of this text. Now, I should be clear, so the outline we just did is just color in the background. Now, if I edit this text, so let's say I'm going to click on this text again, and I'm going to press T to go into the text editor mode. 
and I'm going to click in this text area and I can still modify the text but notice what happens is it's going to just add text and that outline is still constant it's not going to be able to change um, so just be aware of that if you once you make one of these outlines make sure you do it after you do all the modification to the text size you want now what I can do is I want to change the colors to this stuff so I can select let's say I'll select GIMP and I will make it uh, you know this sort of bright red color let's say manipulation I'm gonna pick uh, I'm gonna play around with this a little bit let's say well let's say we'll move the slider to blue or something like that uh, or uh, make this stuff green and usually I just sort of play around with this obviously it's a YouTube video thumbnail so the priority here isn't necessarily making it super aesthetically pleasing it's just making it stick out so that's usually the heuristic that I use when I'm actually playing with the, this stuff uh, so I'm just gonna sort of select some random colors uh, just to make it really garish and sort of, you know, just to make it stick out, to make it, like, draw people's attention. Um, but, uh, oh, why did that do that? Um, let's reselect that. White, blue. Okay, I'm not quite sure why it's doing that, but uh, actually it doesn't matter. White is probably good enough for this. So one other thing about layers, let's say I don't exactly like where this text is. Let's say I want to move it. Now, if I just move the text box or something like that, like if I press M, I can uh, move, well, you'll see, you already see the problem. The background and the text itself are two different things. So I'm going to undo that. Now, first I'm going to control A to make sure everything's selected. Um, but if you want to move things around at once, what you want to do is right in this area next to this eye eyeball thing, um, you're going to want to click and that'll activate a lock. So what this means is basically if things are locked together, then they will move. When you move one of them, it'll move the other. So if I press M again and move this stuff around, you'll see that it both of these layers are actually moving together. So that's sort of what we want. Um, now this is about done. I think this is fine for a YouTube thumbnail. Again, we've talked about inputting uh, you know images and doing text and doing outlines and stuff like that one additional thing I think I want to do is I want to have a little very subtle drop shadow um, On this on this sort of text here, so I'm going to select it actually I don't know this might have changed in Vim 2.10 actually well, well, we'll just try it out real time So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this and I'm actually gonna go ahead just for safety sake to go to alpha to selection So now that all of that is selected um, actually, I don't think I want to do this for drop shadow, so I'm just going to control A. Now what I want to do is have this thing selected, and I'm going to go to filters, and then I'm going to go to, uh, or is it filters? Oh yeah, filters, and then light shadow, um, and then you can select drop shadow. Now what I want is, I just want this to have a, a very subtle, uh, you know, box, uh, a very subtle drop shadow to it. You'll see that it actually sort of implicitly adds it once I already select this option. So notice that there's no drop shadow here. If I go to filters, a light and shadow, and then drop shadow, it adds just a little preview of what it's going to look. And that's, that's actually fine enough for me. Uh, obviously you can change the X and Y of it. You can change the opacity. Actually, maybe I'll increase the opacity a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, that looks good. So once you do that, you can just sort of play around with this. You can change the blur radius, uh, and I'm going to say OK. So now it looks it looks pretty good, I guess, uh, for as far as YouTube thumbnails go. Um, have a nice little drop shadow, have everything else. And I think I'm going to go with this. I might, I might play around with this before I actually upload the video, but uh, anyway, that's about it. So this is the basics of GIMP. Uh, how to, you know, add text and outlines and different layers and how to, the basic logic of it. Um, if you have anything specific you want to know about GIMP, uh, just go ahead and ask. But this should, if you've never used it before, this should give you a pretty basic outline of how to do it. I will say, as you could probably tell by the way I use it, um, I like using keyboard shortcuts and I find that it really improves the speed at which you edit. You can just hover over one of these to see what the uh, shortcut is. Uh, but I might do another video on sort of selecting, like sort of uh, uh, pasting uh, parts outside, or editing layers and, you know, sort of superimposing things. But this is about enough for now. So anyway, hope you learned something and I'll see you guys next time.